Shalom. Shalom Israel. Happy Sabbath. Shalom y'all online. Happy Sabbath. Hope you enjoy the class. Uh, I'm just going to jump right into it. Um, today's topic is going to be called Race in the Bible. Race in the Bible. You got this in there. But there's a doctrine going around from the modern satanic Christians out there that the Israelites were not a race, which I don't understand how they got that idea, but I understand the purpose of why they say that, why that doctrine is being pushed. It's understandable when you're desperate, hoping that <laughs> God's going to come and save you when he's not. Um, let's get Matthew 15, 24. I'm going to open with that first. I don't have that written down, but I want to go there first. I want to show you why there's an underhanded reason behind why they're saying the nation of Israel was not particularly a race of people. I don't understand. Once again, I don't understand why people listen to these people. I don't, I don't get it. Matthew 15, 24. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So this is him speaking to a heathen woman, telling her that he is not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's what we say he was sent to. Get 1811. Same book, 1811. The book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 11. Now, for some odd reason, in many revised version Bibles, 1811 is removed entirely. It's not even in the, in the verse. It's, they go from Matthew, they go to Matthew 18, 10, and it skips to verse 12. They removed 11 altogether. Why? Read. For the Son of Man is come to save that which is lost. So he's explained who so he's sent to save. Save that which is lost. Who's lost? The lost sheep of the house of Israel. So it's clear that the Messiah was sent to a particular group of people. But if you give that, make that people no longer a nation, then that means that he saved everyone. Because he wasn't sent to a particular race of people. So the, pl the plot is to make Israel not a nation at all. So that it can be seen, it can appear as if he was sent to save everyone. Because Israel somehow is not a race of people. Very, very slick. You see through it. You're not fooling anybody, Edom. We know you are. We know what you're doing. Doesn't work. Go to um, the definition of genealogy, please. Yeah, the definition of genealogy. Because for some reason, I get these, these, these Edomites, these alt-right Christian apologetics, think that we're still in the days where we weren't allowed to read. I don't, I don't know. They're lost in time. I don't know. We're going to look these things up. Genealogy. A line of descent traced continuously from an ancestor. Lineage. Go to synonyms, please. Click more. Yep. Genealogy. A line of descent. Keep Pay attention to that word. Descent. We've seen that a lot. For people that's not a race... You shouldn't find that word there. If you're not a race, you shouldn't find descent at all in the Bible. A line of descent traced continuously from an ancestor. If you're not a race, you should not find the word ancestor in the Bible. Synonym, synonyms. Lineage. Line. Line of descent. Family tree. Bloodline. Pedigree. If that shouldn't mean the Bible either. Ancestry. Extraction. Heritage. That shouldn't mean the Bible either. Parentage, birth, family. Keep that word in mind also. Dynasty, house. Is that not written in the Bible? Numerous times. The house of Israel. The house of Israel. Stock. Is that in the Bible? Maybe it's not because Israel is not a race. I'm being sarcastic when I say this. Stock, blood, roots. <sighs> Go to ancestors, please. Definition. I'm just going to just... Hit these real quick. Keep these up, though. I want to go back to them periodically. Go to ancestors, please. Because notice the word ancestry was synonymous with genealogy. Ancestor or ancestry. A person typically one more remote than a grandparent from whom one is descended. Sending again. Forebear, forefather. That shouldn't be in the Bible because it's not a race. Predecessor, antecedent, ante antecedent. Progenitor, that shouldn't be in the Bible either. Primoge prim primogenitor, hey, that's a new one. Forerunner, precursor, predecessor. All right. Let's go to, hold that also. Go to generation, please. 
definition. Generation. I'm going through these words for a reason because they're in the Bible regarding the children of Israel. But somehow the children of Israel are not a race of people, yet you find all these words linked to the people of Israel. And that's all to further push the, the idea that those people over there, those bastards over there who call themselves Israelis are Israelites because they try to say anyone could be a Jew through conversion. Very slick. Generation. All the people born and living up at about the same time regarded collectively. The production of something, that's what I want. The production of something. Creation, production, initiation, origination, inception, inspiration. Is there more? That's all? That's good enough. Uh, let's go to Exodus 3.13. Exodus 3.13. The book of Exodus 3, chapter 3, chapter 3, verse 13. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers have sent me unto you. The God of your who? The God of your fathers have sent me unto you. And they shall say unto me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? So this is the fathers. This is behold. What's that? Uh, the God of your fathers have sent me unto you. The God of your fathers. Fathers. This goes back to your progenitor. Or primogenitor. Or originator. Or predecessor. That's what a father is. Alright. Now. Let's jump to verse. Uh, verse 15. No verse 14. Verse 14. And God said unto Moses. I am that I am. And he said. Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel. I am have sent me unto you. And here's another part. <laughs> that part alone. Children of Israel. Who are the... Israel had children, right? So uh, children of Israel, this is a race of people. Children of a man. That's what a race is. Okay, a lineage. Children of Israel. Go ahead. And God said, moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, the Lord God of your fathers, of your who? Your fathers, uh -huh. and the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, have sent unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. 16. Go and gather the elders of Israel together, and say unto them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, appeared unto me, saying, I have surely visited you and seen that which is done to you in Egypt. So the fathers will be Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Those are our progenitors. That's, what we that's the line in which the children of Israel descend from. All right? Now, let's go to 20, verse 5. Same book. 20, verse 5. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 5. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. Meaning idols. Go ahead. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So fathers generate children. Okay. It says unto the visiting the iniquity of the, of the fathers upon the children. Children of who? Children of the fathers. That's a generation. When you have a grandfather, then the, no, the father, you have a father, the grandfather, a father, and you have the grandson. That's generations. First, third, well, first, second, and third. That's generations. That's a lineage. So I'm trying to understand how Israel did not have these things. Because it's not to be a race, you cannot have these things. It doesn't make any sense. All right? Let's go to 34 and 7. Same book. 34 and 7. The book of Exodus, chapter 34 and verse 7. Keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sin, and that will, will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, and upon the children's children. Generations. Right. Unto the third and to the fourth generation. Gen lineage. This is descendants. Descendants. Lineage, once again, 
it's, it's clear. Go to Numbers 1 and, Numbers 1 and 2. I'm going to go through it in order. Numbers 1 and 2. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 1 and verse 2. Take ye the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel. After their families. After their families. By the house of their fathers. It goes back to family tree. You read that earlier. In the, in the, um, in the um, definition of genealogy. Read again. Take ye the sum of all the, ch- all the congregation of the children of Israel. After their families. By the house of their fathers. By the house of who? Of their fathers. By the house of their fathers. Go ahead. With the number of their names, every male by their po- poles. Another doctrine is that your, both your parents have to be Israel for you to be Israel. If your parent is a heathen, mother or father, you're a heathen. That is, that is an Israeli Edomite Khazar doctrine. That's what it is. It's not biblical whatsoever. The, the Israelis, the Edomite Jews, Edomites, the fake one, the cave Jews... They push that nonsense. They go, well, according to your mother is your nationality. That's not in the Bible. So they go, well, if your father and mother, if your father or mother are heathen, then you're not a Jew. You're a, you're a bastard. We're going to deal with that later on. Because you have Israelites repeating that same nonsense. Meanwhile, they can't go back five generations. Which is insane. Read again. Take ye the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel after their families. By the house of their fathers. By the house, that's in, that's in the dictionary also. Definition of ancestors, the house. It says, by the house of who? Their fathers. Of their fathers. Your house comes from your father. That's why it's called the house of Israel, the children of Israel. It's from your father. Go ahead. With the number of their names, every male by their poles. That's all I want. Go to verse 4. Verse 4. And with you there shall be a man of every tribe, every one head of the house of his fathers. Well, again, house of his fathers. Go to verse 16. Verse 16. These were the renowned of the congregation, princes of the tribes of their fathers, heads of thousands in Israel. Tribes of their fathers. Here we go with the father again. Go to verse 18. Verse 18. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names from 20 years old and upward by their poles. Stop. Declared their pedigrees. Go back to definitions again. Go to, I think it was genealogy. Is it there? Yep. A line of descent traced continuously from an ancestor. Lineage, line, line, descent. Family, families, that's in the verse, family tree, bloodline, pedigree, ancestry, heritage, parentage, birth, family, family, same thing, house, same thing, stock, we're going to deal with that. Click pedigree, please. Yeah, click that. Okay, pedigree. Now, most of the time you hear about animals regarding pedigree with an animal, like a bulldog or a terrier or whatever. Pedigree. This is a record of descent of an animal, showing it to be purebred. It also goes down. The recorded, the recorded, that's the Bible, ancestry, especially upper class. We know the whole nation of Israel is upper class, above all the nations on the earth. The recorded ancestry, especially upper class ancestry of a person or family. Ancestry, descent, lineage, same definitions. Lineage, line of descent, genealogy. Family tree, extraction, derivation, origin or origins, heritage, parentage, bloodline, dual heritage, background, roots, genealogical table, the background of a, or history of a person or thing, especially as inferring distinction or quality, which Israel is distinct and have, qu- more quali- have more quality than all nations on the earth. Once again, your genealogical table. So, are this pedigree in the Bible? Yes. Does Peggy refer to Israel? Yes. Go back, please. Read verse 18 again. Verse 18. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigrees after their families. They declared their pedigrees, though, did the line of descent after their families. Go ahead. Their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers. So the pedigree is based upon 
the house of your father. The house of your father. Like the children of Israel, their pedigree is based upon their fathers. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Not mothers, their fathers. Because the man carries the seed, and the, and the seed is placed in the woman, and it grows within the woman. But the seed still belongs to the man. Go ahead. According to the number of the names from 20 years old and upward by their poles. Go to verse 20. Verse 20. And the children of Reuben, Israel's eldest son, by their generations after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names by their poles, every male from 20 years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war. So Reuben was declared based upon his father. Of Reubenites. Jump, jump down to verse 22. Verse 22. Of the children of Simeon, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, those that were numbered of them according to the number of the names. Go to verse 24. Verse 24. Of the children of Gad, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names from 20 years old and upward. 26. Verse 26, of the children of Judah, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names from 20 years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war. When you read, it's the same thing regarding each tribe based upon the house of their fathers. It's, it's redundant. I'm just, trying, I'm just making it clear. Go to Deuteronomy, 8, Deuteronomy 1 verse 8. Deuteronomy 1 and verse 8. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 8. Behold, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. Unto who? Your fathers. Your fathers. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give unto them and to their seed after them. Unto their what? Their seed after them. And to their seed after them. Their descendants, their seed after them. I mentioned that earlier where the seed comes from the males. Now, let's go to chapter, verse 11. Verse 11. They on, I'm sorry. Not verse 11. Go to um, 6 and 10. Chapter 6, verse 10. Chapter 6, verse 10. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6 and verse 10. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou buildest not. So we keep reading over and over again about our fathers, our fathers, our fathers. It's nonstop. The nation of Israel had a line of descent. They had a lineage, a bloodline, a family tree. Therefore, there had to be a race. It's madness to say otherwise. Go to Leviticus 26, 45. I did go there. Leviticus 26, verse 45. Let's see that's in the Bible. Ancestor. Maybe it's not there. Because after all, Israel somehow is not a race. 26, verse 45. 45? Yep. The book of Leviticus, chapter 26, and verse 45. Yep. But I will for, but I will for their sakes remember the covenant of their ancestors. Of their who? Their ancestors. I don't, I don't understand it. I don't get it. How will not a race? I will, it says, I will remember for their sakes, remember the covenant of their ancestors. Of their ancestors. Go ahead. Whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the heathen that I might be their God and I am the Lord. So he's remembering our ancestors who we took out of the land of Egypt. Because those, those, those ancestors who came out of Egypt had children. They generated children. That gives you generations or genealogies. It's clear. Descendants. Let's go to Ecclesiasticus 8 and 4. Because that shouldn't be in the Bible because Israel is not a race. Somehow. Somehow we're not a race. I don't get it. 8 and 4. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 8 and verse 4. Yep. Just not with a rude man. Don't play around with a rude man. Go ahead. Lest thy ancestors be disgraced. That's what? Lest thy ancestors be disgraced. Because you're not supposed to do that. Read again. Just not with a rude man. Uh-huh. 
Lest thy ancestors be disgraced. Lest thy ancestors be disgraced. You bring a bad name to yourself. Lest thy ancestors be disgraced. Ancestry in the Bible once again. Go to 2 Maccabees 14. There's about a, a house Negro of old time. You got them on YouTube also. But of old time, you had a house Negro named Alchemist who wanted position and authority. Okay, and he, and he decided to slander his brothers in order to do so, in order to gain that authority, which used to have up in here, who are now gone. 14.3. The book of 2 Maccabees, chapter 14 and verse 3. Now one alchemist who had been high priest and had defiled himself willfully in the times of their mingling with the Gentiles. Read again. Now one alchemist who had been high priest and had defiled himself willfully in the times of their mingling with the Gentiles. So he defiled himself willingly. Meaning he gave in. He, he, it wasn't, he wasn't forced. He wanted to fall behind white folks. He loved white folks. He loved the Greeks. Go ahead. Seeing that by no means he could have saved himself. Go ahead. Nor have any more access to the holy altar. Because he was of the line, he was of the priestly line. Go ahead. Came to King Demetrius in the hundred and one and fifteenth year. Fiftieth. Fiftieth year. Presenting unto him a crown of gold and a palm, and also of the bowls which were used solemnly in the temple. And so that day he held his peace. Go ahead. Howbeit, having gotten opportunity to further his foolish enterprise to gain position as high priest go ahead and being called into council by demetrius and asked how the jews stood affected and what they intend he answered what they, what they intended go ahead what they intended he had he answered thereunto those of the jews that be called a city a city mm -hmm. whose captain is judas maccabeus nourish war and are sedious seditious seditious and will not let the realm be in peace. So he's slandering Jewish Maccabees in them. Go ahead. Therefore I, being deprived of my ancestors' honor. Being deprived of what? My ancestors' honor. Being deprived of my ancestors' honor. Which is what? Go ahead. I mean the high priesthood. And now come hither. So he's explaining what it is. His ancestors' honor was the Levitical priesthood. So he's referring to his priesthood Regarding his ancestry, Levitical line. But the key word here is, is ancestors. That's in the Bible. Our four, or even our wicked forefathers used the term ancestors. It's in the Bible. Let's go to um, Judith chapter 5. Let's see if the heathens outside of Israel knew Israel was a race. Maybe they didn't know that. Maybe they were confused. Judith chapter 5, verse 5. This is now this is during the time of Herlaphanes, the general of Nebuchadnezzar, when he was seeking um, knowledge of, um, of, of the nations he was trying to conquer regarding, regarding ours. All right? He was seeking information regarding our nation. This is the book of Judith, chapter 5, verse 5. And this heathen gave him intel regarding our people. Go ahead. Then said... Akior, 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 the captain of all the sons of Ammon. Oh, he was an Ammonite. Go ahead. Let my lord now hear word from the mouth of thy servant, and I will declare to thee the truth concerning this people, which dwelleth near thee, and in, and inhabiteth the hill countries, and there shall no lie come out of the, the the mouth of thy servant. Go ahead. This people are descended. Of the Chaldeans. These people are descended from those of the Chaldeans. He's going to explain what he means. Go ahead. And they sojourn here too forth in Mesopotamia. Because they would not follow the gods of their fathers. Which were in the land of Chaldea. Now, so let me get confused. What's he talking about? Chaldea. We're not Chaldeans. Let's talk about Abraham. He's referring to Abraham who came out of there. Let's get the precept. Let's get Genesis 11 and 31. Descendant of the Chaldeans. I mean, he's descended, descended from a man who came out of there. Because Abraham was from the year of the Chaldees. That's where Abraham resided. Which is modern day Iraq. <clears throat> Genesis, 30, Genesis 11, 31. The book of Genesis, chapter 11, verse 30, 31. Because he refused, says he refused to follow the God of his fathers. Talk about Abraham, because his family members were wicked as hell, including his father. 
Go ahead. And Terah took Abram, his son, and Lot, the son of Haran, his son's son. His grandson. Yeah, his grandson. And Sarai is his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife. And they went forth with the with from they went forth with them from your of the Chaldees. That's where Abraham and them came from. Go ahead, left there. Go ahead. To go into the land of Canaan. The Lord promised Abraham land. And Abraham believed and he left. So he left with his father, his wife, and his nephew. Go ahead. And they came to Haran and, and dwelt there. I'm sorry, and Lot and, his, and Lot's um family as well. Go ahead. And they came to Haran and dwelt there. And, and they came to where? Haran and dwelt there. They came to Haran and dwelt there. Okay, so that's Mesopotamia as well. Uh, go back to Judah 5. Judah 5 and 8. Judah 5 verse 8. So he's referring to Abraham. The book of Judah chapter 5 verse 8. For they left the way of their ancestors and worshipped the God of heaven. The God whom they knew. That's about Abraham. The God is, they knew was referring to Abraham. Go ahead. So they cast them out from the face of their gods, and they fled into Mesopotamia, and sojourned there many days. That's Haran. It's referring to Haran. All right? Hold on. Let's go to Second Ezra 3, 12, 15. Just some more detail on that. Second Ezra 3, verse 12. This is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 3, verse 12. Yeah. And it happened when they that dwelt upon the earth began to multiply and had gotten them many children. So it's talking about um, when the earth was replenished after the flood. Read again. And it happened that when they that dwelt upon the earth began to multiply and had gotten them many children. Generations. And were a great people. They began again to be more ungodly than the first. Than those who were killed by the flood. They were worse. Go ahead. Now when they lived so wickedly before thee, thou didst choose thee a man from among them whose name was Abraham. Uh -huh. Him thou lovest, and unto him only thou suest thy will. His commandments. Go ahead. And madest an everlasting covenant with him, promising him that thou wouldest never forsake his seed. Go ahead. And unto him thou gavest Isaac. And unto Isaac also thou gavest Jacob and Esau. As for Jacob, thou didst choose him to thee, and put by Esau. He put Esau away. I want to do with you. Go ahead. And so Jacob became a great multitude. So one. So referring to that, and Judah is referring to Abraham. Aki of the Ammonite was referring to Abraham. Oh, you follow? Let's go to Joshua twenty-four and two. Joshua 24 and 2. This is the book of Joshua, chapter 24 and verse 2. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old time. Even no, verse 2. Verse 2. Oh, I'm sorry, read again. I'm sorry about that. that is it. Go ahead. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old time. Even Terah. Even Terah, Abraham's father. The father of Abraham and the father of Nahor. And they served other gods. Nahor, Nahor is, Nahor, is Nahor. Go ahead, his brother. Go ahead. And they served what? And they served other gods. And they served other gods. It's going back to what he said in Judith. Go ahead. And I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood and led him throughout all the land of Canaan. And multiplied his seed and gave him Isaac. So Terah served other gods. That's why it, before Abraham left to go to the promised land, Terah died. So I'm not bringing him with you. That dude's a pagan. And Terah dropped dead and Abraham left and went to, to the promised land. He left Haran, left his dead father over there and moved to, um, to Canaan. All right? So his father was pagan. Like all the rest of his family. Unlike him, who, went, who was not. Let's go to... Judah 5, verse 20. Jump down to verse 20. So we're reading about our forefathers all throughout the Bible, yet somehow they're not a race. I don't get it. Judah chapter 5 and verse 20. Now therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error in this people, and they sin against their God, let us consider that this shall be their ruin, and let us go up. And we shall overcome them. So he's saying this is their strengths and weaknesses. If they sin against their God, we can overthrow them. I mean, if they 
keeping the commandments, we can't touch them. They're untouchable. Go ahead. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by, lest their God defend them, and their God be for them, and we become a reproach before all the world. We get, we get destroyed. Go ahead. And when a core... No, 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 I saw one. Okay. Uh, are you 20 again? Sorry, I'll be 20 again. Now, therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error in this people, and they sin against their God, let us consider that this shall be their ruin. Uh -huh. And let us go up, and we shall overcome them. If they sin, we can beat them. Go ahead. But if there be no iniquity in their nation. In their what? In their nation. In their what? In their nation. In their nation. Look at that word, please. Nation. Definition. No iniquity in their nation. See what nation means. Uh, here we go again. Redundant. Nation, a large aggregate of people united by common descent. <sighs> History, culture, or language inhabiting a particular country or territory, in our case, Jerusalem. Synonyms, country, sovereign state, that goes into where you're from. State, land, realm, kingdom, republic, fatherland, motherland, people, race. Race. So nation and race are synonymous. Click race, please. Race, second definition. Uh, a group of people sharing the same culture, that's Israel, history, Israel again, language, etc., an ethnic group. Ethnic group, racial type, origin, ethnic origin, color, what a more. Well, that's it. Uh, factor. Yeah, that's all I want. Group of people, common feature, features. Yeah, that's all I want. So race and nation are synonymous. Israel is a race of people or a nation of people. Genesis 10 verse 1. So you find ancestry in the Bible, pedigree pertaining to Israel, families, house of, race. That's in there too. We'll get that later. Well, soon. Genesis 10. This is referred to as the table of nations, this, this chapter. Or table of races. The book of Genesis chapter 10 and verse 1. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And unto them were sons born after the flood. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, and Magog, and Madai, and Javan, and Tobal, and Meshech, and Taras. Go ahead. Those are the Japheth's children. Go ahead. And the sons of Gomer... Ash Ashkenaz, mm -hmm, that's and, Germany, and Rifpaf, and Tagama, and the sons of Javan. Javan will be Greece. Alisha, and Tershash, Tershish, Tershish should be Spain. Kittim, Rome, and Dodanim. Go ahead, Spain. That's part of Rome, also. Go ahead. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, every one after his tongue. After their families in their nations. In their what? In their nations. In their nations. These, for you, these three men provided nations. You had Japhetic, Hamitic, and Semitic. Or some would say Shemitic races. Go ahead. And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizraim, and Foot, and put, Canaan. That's put. And Put. Now and, jump to verse 20. Verse 20. These are the sons of Ham. After their families, after their tongues, in their countries, and in their nations. In their nations. Ham had nations that came out of him. Like Japheth. Jump to verse um, 31 to 32. Verse 31. These are the sons of Shem. After their families. That's our forefather. Go ahead. After their tongues, in their lands, after their nations. Go ahead. These are the families of the sons of Noah. After their generations. After their what? After their generations. Because they generated children. Generations. Go ahead. In their nations. In their what? In their nations. Within their nations. Go ahead. And by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. Nations were divided. Never supposed to be together. They were divided in the earth. That's the natural order of things. Nations being divided. Not being together. God don't like that. God doesn't like melting pots. Let's go to... Ecclesiasticus 26, 19. 
Because in that time, they tried the melting pot and the Mosai confounded the languages. During the first melting pot with Nimrod. Or Nimrod's kingdom, rather. Uh, Ecclesiastes 26, verse 19. We're going to read to verse 21. Ecclesiastes 26 and 19. My son, keep the flower of thine age sound. Keep the flower of thine age sound. Go ahead. And give not thy strength to strangers. Do not give yourself over to heathen women. That's what he's talking about. Strangers. Go ahead. When the flower of your age is referring to your, your virginity. Your, your, your virginity. Go ahead. Read again from the top. My son, keep the flower of thine age sound. Strong. Go ahead. And give not thy strength to strangers. Go ahead. When thou hast gotten a fruitful possession. A fruitful possession is a woman. A woman. Go ahead. Through all the field. Throughout the, throughout the land. Go ahead. Sow it in thine own seed. Read it again. When thou hast gotten a fruitful possession through all the field, sow it with thy own seed. Sow it with thine own seed. Your own seed. Go ahead. Trusting in the goodness of thy stock. Trusting what? Trusting in the goodness of thy stock. Trusting in the goodness of your stock. That word was found in genealogy. Stock. Trusting in the goodness of your stock. Go ahead. So thy race which thou leavest shall be magnified. Do what? So thy race. Your what? Thy race. Your race. Thy race is in the Bible. Your race. Go ahead. Which thou leavest shall be magnified. Which you leave behind your descendants shall be magnified. Go ahead. Having the confidence of their good descent. Having the constant, read again, having the what? Having the confidence of their good descent. Having the confidence of their good descent. Line of descent. Descendants, same thing. Race, descent, same thing in the Bible. This is a prophet speaking to his people. Race is in the Bible. Descent, pedigree, nation. I don't get it. Where you get, they're not a race from. Fairy tales. Something nations are good at make something nations are good at making, creating fables and fairy tales. Like their God. First Chronicles 9 and 1. What I find odd is that when you tell the so-called white man who called himself a Jew that he's an Edomite, he's offended by that. But I thought anyone could be a Jew. What's wrong with being an Edomite? You're an Edomite that converted to being a Jew, right? Anybody? So why can't you be an Edomite that converted to Judaism? But the problem is. The problem is you don't like being called Edom because you know what Edom is. You know that's a race of people that God don't like. So you don't like that. Don't call me that. Then they send a prayer saying, thank God I'm not a goy. You know what a goy is? A goy is a heathen, a non-Jew. They send a prayers among themselves, thank God that they're not, that they're not, even though they are, that they're not heathens like us. But then they say, oh, anyone, anyone could be a Jew. Well, why would you send prayers like that then? Why would that be a prayer of yours to thank God that you're not a Jew if any non-Jew can become one? Hear the hypocrisy behind these bastards? Because that's what they are, bastards. Godless people. Godless. They have no God whatsoever, so they make things up. That's what godless people do. Put their mouth on baby penises. Rob people. Create Negro rappers that you see out today. Make money behind them. Run the banks and so forth. That's what they do. Lie and make things up. Yeah. They, they black market our organs. Right, black market our organs as well. They're behind all those things. Behind a whole lot of things. Investing in slave ships and things like that nature. They leave that behind though. <sighs> First Chronicles 9 and 1. The book of First Chronicles 9 and verse 1. So all Israel were reckoned by genealogies. Or what? All Israel were reckoned by genealogies. Reckoned goes back to being acknowledged or considered by genealogies. Established by genealogies. Go ahead. Genealogies. And genealogies. Go ahead. And behold... They were written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah who were carried away to Babylon for their transgressions. So Israel, we had what was called a city hall of our own. We had a hall of records among the kings. The kings had, had the, obviously our genealogies are found in the records of the kings in the, I guess, the prominent areas. Okay. We had a hall of records. Guess who has those now? The heathen have those now. We don't have those. But back then, Israel had our own city hall. We can go to our records and so forth and say, I'm from so-and-so. They look you up. Okay. Yeah, you're the lineage of so-and-so or whatever. That's how it was back then. We don't have that no more. We don't have that no more. But you have Israelites saying, oh, you're a mamzer. Oh, you're a bastard. We're going to do that later on, which is comical to me. Very hilarious to me to hear that nonsense come out of other people's mouth. I'll deal with that later. 
So it says genealogies, all Israel reckoned by genealogies. Right? Let's go to chapter 7, verse 9. First Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 9. And the number of them, after their genealogy by their generations... Heads of the house of their fathers. Of the house of their what? House of their fathers. This, this comes from this genealogy comes from your generation comes from. Go ahead. Mighty men of valor was twenty thousand and two hundred. Get Ezra two fifty nine. Ezra two fifty nine. The book of Ezra chapter two and verse nine. Mm -mm. Fifty nine. Fifty nine. Fifty nine. And these were they which went up. From Telamah, Tel Tel Telasa, Sherub, Adan, and Emir. Mm -hmm. But they could not shoe their family's house. So they what? They could not shoe their family's house. They don't say family there. I'm sorry. And they, sh and they could not shoe their father's house. They could not prove their father's house, their father's lineage. They could not prove it. They could not provide proof. That shows that Israel had records. They had what we had, what they call today, birth certificates. Israel had those back then. They came forward and said, listen, I don't have any evidence that I'm, that's my forefather, whatever. We had records back then of our lineages. Go ahead. But they could not shew their father's house and their seed, whether they were of Israel. The seed, do I have here in my Bible, it says pedigree, the seed here. And their seed or their pedigree, whether they what? Whether they were of Israel. So you are considered Israel based upon your what? Your father's house. Your father's house. Not mother's house. Father's house. Go ahead. The children of Deliah, the children of Tobiah, the children of Nekodah, 650 and 2. Go ahead. And of the children of the priests, the children of Habai, Habiah, the children of Kaz, the children of Bezbarzilia, which took a wife of the daughters of the Barzilia, Barzilia, the, the Gileadite, and was called after their name. Go ahead. These sought their register among those that were reckoned by genealogy. So these particular people sought their registry among those that were reckoned by genealogy. Go ahead. But they were not found. You couldn't find them in the records. Go ahead. Therefore were they as polluted, but from the priesthood. Put from the priesthood, they were not allowed to from being the priest's temple. They were not allowed to do the priest's office. They could not prove that they were Levites. They couldn't do it. Next verse. And the Teshada, God's governor, this is about Nehemiah, go ahead, said unto them that they should not eat of the most holy things. They could not perform the priestly duties. Go ahead. Till so there stood up a priest with Urim and with Tummim. 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 Until the Most High comes and speaks to the, another priest that can confirm that they are Israel. The Most High had to come forward between that and go, listen, these guys are Israelites and establish it then. That was the only way they can determine they were Israel. Without registry, without record, they had to go to the Lord himself to find out if they were Israel or not. Unlike today. Our genealogy now is based upon Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 33, 2nd Ezra 13. That's our Hall of Records now. Psalms 83, Joel 3. Y'all understand what I'm talking about. That's our records now. First Esdras 536. First Esdras 536. Got the apocalypse. Genealogy, generation, house of their fathers. Let's see what it says here. First Esdras 5 and 36. First Esdras 5 and 36. These came up from Thamalia and Thelorosis. Same place, guys, in Greek. Go ahead. Carathelior leading them. And <laughs> what? <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. It's a long word. Char Char speaking, speaking real Greek over there. Just Char <laughs> Read Char it again. Charathalar. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you sounded out. Help I me can't out, pronounce man. it either. Go ahead. It's just good. <laughs> read on, read on, skip over. Leading them and Alar. Yeah, Alar, yeah. Neither could they shoe their families, nor their stock. Nor their what? Nor their stock. Nor their stock. Go back to genealogy again. Nor show their families, nor their family. Go back to family tree, nor their stock. Go ahead. How they were of Israel. How they were Israel or not. The sons of Laban and son of Ban. 
The sons of Nokadan, 650 and 2. That goes to Nakoda. Get in the Bible. Go ahead. And of the priests that usurped the office of the priesthood and were not found. They were, not, they were, they were, they were doing the priestly office. They were in the priestly office, but they couldn't prove that they were Levites. See, the Nehemiah had to say, you guys got to go. You can't prove you're Levites. You can't be in here. You don't know if you're Israel or not. Go ahead. The sons of Obadiah, the sons of Akos, the sons of Adus, A Addison, who married a guy. One of the daughters of Agi, Agaya. Agaya, one of the daughters of Barzellus, and was <laughs> named after his name. Go ahead. And when the description of the kindred of these men was sought in the register and was not found, they were removed from executing the office of the priesthood. Go ahead. For unto them said Nehemiah and Atharias. That go back to the Teshada. Go ahead, Nehemiah. Go ahead. That they should not be partakers of the holy things. So there rose and up an high priest clothed with doctrine and truth. Urim and Thummim, same thing. Now let's go to um, Nehemiah 7 and 5. Nehemiah 7 and 5. It's Tishada now, his own book. Nehemiah 7 and 5. Because during this time, Israel had to, get, had to rid themselves of the heathen that they were following behind. When they came back from Babylon, they came back with Babylonian wives. Babylonian doctrines for heathen wives and doctrines and so forth. And their children were speaking the heathen language, following heathen customs. So Nehemiah did the clean house. Let's start over fresh. That's what's happening in Nehemiah and Ezra. Nehemiah 7 verse 5. The book of Nehemiah chapter 7 and verse 5. <clears throat> and my God put unto mine heart to gather together the nobles and the rulers and the people that they might be reckoned by genealogy. Uh -huh. And I found the register of the genealogy of them which came up at the first and found written therein. That's what he read in Ezra. So Nehemiah was the one who, who discovered the hall of records. He found our records. The genealogies of our people who first came up from exile, from Babylon. All right? That's what he's going into. Now let's go to 1 Chronicles 23. 1 Chronicles 23 and verse 14. The book of First Chronicles, chapter 23 and verse 14. Now concerning Moses, the man of God, his sons were named of the tribe of Levi. Read again. Now concerning Moses, the man of God, his sons were named of the tribe of Levi. What were Moses' sons? What? what? Tribe of Levi, I follow. Tribe of Levi, right? Now remember. Should I go there now? No, I'll read. Go to Numbers 12 and 1. No, no, matter of fact, read on, read on, read on. Read down, we're going to read down to verse 16. The sons of Moses were Gershom and Eleazar. So these are his two sons he had. Moses had Gershom and Eleazar. Go ahead. Of the sons of Gershom, Shebuliel was the chief. Uh -huh. And the sons of Eleazar were Rehabiah, the chief. That's all I want. So Gershom, Shebuliel was the chief. Sons of Eleazar was Rehabiah, the chief. And Eleazar had none other sons but the sons of Rehabiah, were very many. So he had one son, and that son had a whole bunch of kids. So Eleazar and Gershom were numbered among the tribe of Levi. I follow? Numbers 12 and 1. I'm going, to, I'm going to this for a reason. I'm doing this for a reason. I'm just lining it up. Numbers 12 and 1. The book of Numbers, chapter 12 and verse 1. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. Because it was against the law, even before Moses, to marry outside of your nation. You weren't supposed to do that. He married an African woman. Moses, a black man, married a dark woman, a black woman also, but not of the children of Israel. Because the bastards say, oh, because she was black, Moses white. No, that's not why. Because she was a Hamite. That's why they were, met. They were angry. Because through tradition of the fathers passed down, you weren't supposed to do that. Can I prove it? Sure. Genesis, go real quick. Genesis 27. Okay, here we go. Genesis 27. And we're going to read verse um, 46. The book of Genesis, chapter 27 and verse 46. And Rebekah said to Isaac, 
I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Heth. Hamites, like Cush, which will be an Ethiopian woman. He's a Hamites. Go ahead. If Jacob take a wife of the daughters of Heth, such as these, which are of the daughters of the land, what good shall my life do me? If our son Jacob marries a Hamite, I'm going to be mad as hell. He don't marry no Hamite. I'm going to be no Hamites in this house. That's what she's saying. <laughs> Next chapter and verse. And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said unto him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Or Ham. Go ahead. Arise. Go to Padarim. Padanaram. Padanaram. To the house of Bethuel, thy, thy mother's father. Your uncle. And take thee a wife from thence of the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. Go ahead. And God Almighty bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply thee, that thou mayest be a multitude of people. Go ahead. And give thee the blessing of Abraham. To thee and to thy seed with thee. Your children. That thou mayest inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger. Now, read um, verse 6. Verse 6. When Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him away to Padanaram to take him a wife from thence, and that, he, and that as he blessed him, he gave him a charge, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. And that Jacob obeyed his father and his mother and was gone to Padanaram. So Jacob obeyed his parents and went and married a woman of his own kindred. Watch what Esau does. And Esau, seeing that the daughters of Canaan pleased not Isaac his father. He didn't, his parents didn't like that. Go ahead. Then went Esau unto Ishmael and took unto the wives, unto the wives which he had, Mahalath, the, Mahalath, da uh -huh. Mahalath, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Nabajah, to be his wife. He still didn't marry his own. Because he was a Hebrew. Abraham, um, Esau was a Hebrew. He still wouldn't marry something else. Go to 26 verse 34. 24. This is why he wouldn't marry Ishmael. Watch this. 26 verse 34. The book of Genesis 26 verse 34. Now mind you, Esau married uh, um, uh, he married Ishmael. Those children were still Edomites. They, weren't, they didn't become Esau mill. They were Esau, Edomites, period. Read that, 26, 34. Verse 34. And Esau was 40 years old when he took to wife Judith, the daughter of Beeri, the Hittite. The who? The Hittite. Hamites. And Beshemoth, Beth Beth the daughter of Elon, the Hittite. Two Hittites. You married two Hamite women. Go ahead. Which were which were. A grief of mine unto Isaac and to Rebekah. His parents is pissed. Who you married that for? See how Esau was? He was rebellious. He married three heathen women. That's why he's called profane fornicator. Because he wasn't supposed to do that. So even before Moses, it was a law not to marry outside of your own. That's why Moses' brother, so Matt, so Miriam primarily, was mad as hell at Moses. What you marry that for? We supposed to marry that because it was past your tradition. Stick to your own. They were mad behind that. That's where the anger came from. But Miriam went overboard. She got turned to a white girl. Went from Miriam to Paris Hilton for like a week. Shh, quiet, black woman, quiet. <laughs> Numbers 12. That's what happened. Numbers 12. Read verse 1 again. The book of Numbers 12 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman who he had married. Her name was Zipporah. And through Zipporah he had Gershom and Eleazar, Eleazar. Right? He had those two boys. Gershom and Eleazar he had through Zipporah. Those are his sons he had. I'm trying to find a verse where it says it. There we go. Uh, Exodus chapter 2. And 20. 21, yeah, 21. The book of Exodus, chapter 2 and verse 21. And Moses was content to dwell with the man. Jethro. And he gave Moses Zipporah, his daughter. That's the Ethiopian woman. So that's what, that's what Jethro was. He was an Ethiopian priest over the children of Midian. Because oftentimes he was being a Midianite because he resided there. He was a priest of a Midian. He was an Ethiopian priest, a Cushite priest over Midian. Go ahead. And she bare him a son. And he called his name Gershom, for he had, for he said, 
I have been a stranger in a strange land. He, Gershom means stranger. So he had Gershom and eventually he had Eleazar from her as well. All right? Two sons from an Ethiopian woman. But they were named, what child were they though? Levi. Levi. Based upon the house of their fathers. But according to some, if your father or mother are heathens, you are a bastard somehow. Hmm. Yet they're numbered Levites. Levites. Hmm. Interesting doctrine that is. Genesis 48, verse 1. Genesis 48, verse 1. Now, remember, the reason why Moses had married that woman was because, remember, he was away from his people for 40 years in a foreign land. All of Israel was in Egypt. Moses fled out of Egypt and resided in this area with this man for 40 years. What are you supposed to do? He ain't gonna, Moses isn't going to sit there and do nothing. So the kind of man he was needed a wife. The Lord, let, the Lord let that ride. Likewise, Joseph, his family was in Canaan. He was prisoner in Egypt. And eventually he, re, he rose to, to status. He married what was there. Because he was there. His family, his family was not there. So he had an excuse. Y'all follow. So brothers try to use that as an excuse. No, 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 no. Can't I use Moses or Joseph as an excuse? They had their, most I let that ride. Genesis 48 and verse uh, 1. Genesis 48 and verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that one told Joseph, Behold, thy father is sick. And he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. So Joseph had two boys, Manasseh and Ephraim. Manasseh the eldest, Ephraim the youngest. Go ahead. And one told Jacob and said, Behold, thy son Joseph cometh unto thee. And Israel strengthened himself and sat upon the bed. Go ahead. And Jacob said unto Joseph, God Almighty appeared un unto me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me. Yeah. And said unto me, Behold, I will make thee fruitful and multiply thee. And I will make of thee a multitude of people. And will give this land to thy seed after thee for an everlasting possession. Verse 5. And now thy two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt before I came. Unto thee and into Egypt are mine. As Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. So J Jacob adopted those two into the twelve. He brought them into the twelve. They became part of the twelve right here. Go ahead. As Reuben and Simeon are mine, I'll make these two also part of the twelve. Go ahead. And thy issue, which thou begettest after them, shall be thine, and shall be called after the name of their brethren and their inheritance. Yeah, Israel. Uh, hold on a second. Uh, Go to 46 and 20. 46 verse 20. Let's see what their mother was. The book of Genesis chapter 46 and verse 20. And unto Joseph in the land of Egypt were born Manasseh and Ephraim, mm -hmm. which Asana, the, the daughter of Petor, P Pot of Potipharah, Potipharah, priest of Onber, On. On, priest of On, bear unto them. So, so Joseph's wife was Egyptian, another Hamite woman. Just like Moses married a Hamite, Joseph also married a Hamite and had children by them. And these children became the children of Israel. Why am I going through this? Let's go to Numbers uh, 13, verse 8. So they had Ephraim, she, Joseph had Ephraim and Manasseh through an Egyptian woman. And Moses had Levite, well, his, his children who were considered Levites, who had an Ethiopian woman. Ethiopian woman. Numbers 13 and verse 8. Numbers 13 and verse 8. Of the tribe of Ephraim, Osea, the son of Nun. Read again. Of the tribe of Ephraim, Osea, the son of Nun. Osea, the son of Nun. Of the tribe of Ephraim, Osea, the son of Nun. The son of Nun. Osea, turn down to verse 16. Verse 16. These are the names of the men which Moses sent to spy out the land. And Moses called Oshea, the son of Nun, Joshua. Uh-huh. So Oshea's name was changed to Jehoshua, which means savior, because he was the one that was going to save Israel from the heathen when they got into the promised land. He was the deliverer. You understand? So, I, so who, became Moses, who became Moses' successor? Joshua, who happened to have down the line an Egyptian great, 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 great grandmother. Right? And Manasseh too. Hmm. Let's go to Mamzer, please. 
Mamzer. Mamzer. Bastard, child of incest. That is a bastard. It's one. That could be be Moab and Ammon. Your so-called uh, the wash pots today, the ones who own most of the cleaners and give us and, and feed us plastic as rice. That will be uh, Moab and Ammon, Chinese, Japanese. That's them. These are bastards. They're walking bastards. They're born of incest. And so they're not allowed in the congregation. Bastards, child of incest, illegitimate child, meaning a child of a whore or a child of adultery. That's also considered to be a bastard child. So technically speaking, a lot of Israelites would be bastards because a lot of Israelites were born illegitimately. So I don't know why you would even use this to condemn other Israelites who have uh, um, a Jake father and heathen mother. And your great great or your grandmother or grandfather may have had your father illegitimately as well and made you and you'd be a bastard too. Uh, anyway, bastard, child of incest, illegitimate, illegitimate child, bastard, mixed population, I mean heathens. Born of a Jewish father and a heathen mother, or vice versa? So that means that I would mean that Ephraim and Manasseh are bastards, and Moses' children are bastards. That's what that means according to this definition here. And they can't say, oh, that's, that's, they can't say that's, that's after Moses, because you read earlier before Moses that that was not condoned to intermingle your, your seed. It wasn't condoned. Let's go back further than that. Let's go beyond. Let's go before even that. Go to Tobit real quick. Tobit 4. Let's go before Abraham, Isaac, and just go before them. Tobit 4. Hold on. Hold, keep that up. You know what I want. Tobit 4 and uh, 12. Yep, maybe I know what I want. The book of Tobit, chapter 4 and verse 12. Beware of all whoredom. My son, mm -hmm. and chiefly take a wife of the seed of thy fathers, uh -huh. and take not a strange woman to wife, which is not of thy father's tribe. Uh -huh. For we are the children of the prophets. So, oh, read again. Sorry, read it on the top. Beware of all whoredom, my son, and chiefly take a wife of the seed of thy fathers. So take a wife of the seed of your fathers is referring to your people. Marry your own people. That's what he's saying right there. Go ahead. And take not a strange woman to wife. Go ahead. Which is not of thy father's tribe. Or, or your tribe. Which is not of your people or your tribe. Go ahead. For we are the children of the prophets. Read that, folks. Because there's another doctrine that states that you cannot marry outside your tribe. Another doctrine. You cannot marry outside your tribe. When they didn't use this, it goes, take of your wife of your own tribe, it says here. But it says here, take a wife of the seed of thy fathers. But, uh, look, look, I'm, I'm going to clear it up also. That's also confusion. Read 12 again from the top. Beware of all whoredom, my son. Uh -huh. And chiefly take a wife of the seed of thy fathers. Uh -huh. And take not a strange woman to wife. Don't marry another nation. Go ahead. Which is not of thy father's tribe. Go ahead. For we are the children of the prophets. Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Noah. Stop. Now he asked someone else. Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Watch. Remember, my son, that our fathers from the beginning. Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Even that they all married wives of their own kindred. Of their own what? Kindred. Their own kind. Kin, kindred, your own kin. So you can marry your own kin, period. Go ahead. And were blessed in their children. And were blessed. And it goes back to Ecclesiastes when it says you have magnified your, your race. And be confident. Your children will have confidence in their good descent. So the law was to marry within your nation, period. You understand? So Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob... Married their own kindred. Because they knew back then you had to marry within your lineage. Don't marry outside of that. Stay within your lineage. In Noah's case, the children of the sons of God. He stuck with that. His wife was of the sons of God. He stuck with that. Adam's lineage. He didn't go outside of that. He stayed in that. You understand? Matter of fact, give me the dictionary real quick. Zonovan Dictionary. I'm going to show you something. Just to prove that he dealt with his own people. Even teaching dealt with his own people. The Zonovan Dictionary. Flood. Page 178. It's Flood Deluge. It's Flood, for flood First. We're going to read Today Many Conservative. No, no, no. Uh, yeah. Today Many Conservative. We're going to stop at um, Eventually Cain. Abraham eventually came. You see it? What page you want me on? Page 178. It's the back. It says, Today Many Conservative. Got it. This is the 
Zondervan Bible Dictionary, page 178. Referring to flood and deluge. Go ahead. Flood. Today, many conservative scholars defend the local flood. Mm -hmm. The crux of their argument seems to center in the covenant relation of God to man. So, so conservative scholars say that they believe that, that the flood wasn't um, global. It was local based upon this. Go ahead. He deals with certain groups such Stop. as. Hold on, hold on. Slowly. You want to digest this. Read again. Today, many this is their reason why I think it was a local flood. It wasn't, but they think it was a local flood based upon this here. Today, many conservative scholars defend a local flood. Not a global one. Go ahead. The crux of their argument seems to center in the covenant relation of God to man. What man? Watch this. He deals with certain groups. He, God deals with certain groups. Go ahead. Such as the children of Israel. Mm. Scholars know who God deals with. Go ahead. The reasoning in regard to Noah is that Noah was not a preacher of righteousness to peoples of other areas. But Stop. Noah was not a preacher of righteousness to people of other areas. Go ahead. But was concerned with the culture. His own people. Go ahead. From which Abraham eventually came. Noah only dealt his own people. And only taught his own people. That's the sons of God down the line. He didn't do it the other nations. Other, he didn't do it other nations. The be the wicked and daughters of men. He didn't deal with them. He dealt with his own people from the culture in which Abraham came. Y'all follow? He married his own kindred and taught his own kindred only. Now, let's go to Mamzer again. So that goes right back to I'm not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Know that the exact same thing. Follow the exact same blueprint. Told his own people. Um, Mamzer, bastard, mixed population, born of a Jewish father or a heathen mother or vice versa. So you have a heathen father and Jake mother. Basically, you have to have a Jake. What it, well, Israelis say Jake mother makes you Israel. That's what they say. But in here, it says both. Both, by the, both, both your parents, if both your parents are not Jews, you're a bastard. If one of your parents is a heathen, you're a bastard. That's the doctrine. That's not biblical. Because if that were the case, that means Moses' children should not be counted as a child of Levi. Ephraim and Manasseh should not be counted in the 12 tribes of Israel. Jacob would have said, no, I can't count your kids. You're Egyptian, your mom's Egyptian. I can't deal with that. He said, no, they're mine. Was Jacob the devil? No, he was not. But this doctrine is. The reality is that you're only a bastard based upon the based upon incest, whoredom, illegitimacy, um, heathen, or born of a heathen father and Jew mother. That's when you're a bastard. Because your father is a heathen, that's a bastard. You understand? Heathen father, Jake mother is not a, not Israel. That's a bastard. Not vice versa. There's a heathen father, Jake father, uh, Israelite father. And a heathen mother, it's still Israel. Remember, Esau married an Ishmaelite. He had more Edomites. Esau or Edom married two Hamite women, still had Edomites. We marry a heathen woman, it's a bastard. I don't understand that. Don't make no sense. Exodus 6 and 23. The book of Exodus chapter 6 and verse 23. I don't get it. The rule should apply across the board. Exodus 6 and 23. And Aaron took him Elisheba, daughter of Minit Adab. Hold on, let me get it. Let me get it. Let me get it. Hold on a second. Uh, let me get that too. Read again. And Aaron took him Elisheba, daughter of Amin Amin Aminadab, Aminadab mm -hmm. sister of a Naash, Naashan, Naashan mm -hmm. to wife. And she bare him Nabab and Abihu. Abihu, uh huh. Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. Ithamar. Read again. And Aaron took him Elisheba. Aaron, hold on slowly. Aaron took him Elisheba. Go ahead. Daughter of Aminadab. Daughter of Aminadab. Go ahead. Sister of Naashan. Naashan. Sister of Naashan. Now, Aaron took a, um, a, a, a woman named Elisheba, who was the daughter of Aminadab, sister of Naashan. Who is Aaron took a wife of this woman, right? You follow? Elisheba. Let's see who Elisheba is related to. Elisheba, daughter of Aninadab, sister to Naashan, to wife. And she bare him Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, Itamar. These four. Let's get 
First Chronicles 2 verse 9. The doctrine is that you must only marry your own tribe. You cannot marry outside your tribe. Oh, boy, I tell you, these doctrines, man. First Chronicles 2, verse 9. The book of First Chronicles 2 and verse 9. The sons also of Hezron that were born unto him. Jeremiel. Jeremiel and Ram. And Chaliba. Chalabai. That's Caleb. Calebi. Uh-huh, go ahead. And Ram begat Ammon. Hold on. No. No, I read it wrong. Yeah. Aminadab. Right. Ram begat. So it says, the sons of Hezron. Uh, Matthew, jump to verse 3. Verse 3. The sons of Judah, Ur and Onan and Shalah. Stop. So it's done with the sons of Judah. Now jump down to verse, um, we read before. Verse 9 again. Verse 9. The sons also of Hezron that were born unto him, Jeremiel and Ram. And Chelebah. That's Caleb of Judah. Go ahead. And Ram begat Aminadab. And Ram, Ram begat Aminadab. Ram begat Aminadab of the child of Judah. Go ahead. And Aminadab begat Nashon. Aminadab begat Nashon. Sound familiar? Go ahead. Prince of the children of Judah. Prince of the children of Judah. Nashon was a prince of the children of Judah. Go back to what we had before. Exodus 6.23. The so book. who did Aaron marry? What tribe was his woman's wife? Exodus 6.23. The book of Exodus 6.23. And Aaron took him Elisheba. Elisheba, go ahead. Elisheba, daughter of Aminadab. Daughter of Aminadab. That's Judah. Go ahead. Sister of Nashon. Nashon, Nash Nash go ahead. To wife. So Aminadab had a son named Nashon. Nashon had a sister named Elisheba. Aaron married a Judite girl, a woman. And his children were, were a child of what? Levi. They were the high priest. The high priest come out of that line. So this is obviously going off. Because you're supposed to marry within your tribe, I thought. What happened with that? Aaron married, Aaron married a Judite woman and had Levite children. Who else? I mentioned earlier. Joseph married an Egyptian woman, had Israelite children. Moses married an Ethiopian woman, had children of Levi as well. It's, this is ridiculous. These doctrines are simple and ridiculous. Ruth 4.18. I'm just going to keep nailing it. This guy not knock it until it's gone. Ruth chapter 4. The book of Ruth chapter 4 and verse 18. Now these are the generations of Perez. Perez begat Hezron. Perez was the child, was the child of Judah. Perez, read again. Now these are the gene generations of Perez. Perez begot Hezron. Remember Hezron? Go ahead. And Hezron begat Ram. Uh huh. And Ram begat Aminadab. Aminadab. Go ahead. And Aminadab begot Nashon. Uh huh. And Nashon begat Salmon. And Nashon's sister was Elisheba, who Aaron married. Go ahead. And Salmon begat Boaz. And Boaz begat Obed. And Obed begat Jesse. And Jesse begat David. That's the children of Judah. Aaron married a Judite. Let's clearing it up. Matthew 1, verse 3. The book of Matthew, chapter 1 and verse 3. And Judas begat Perez and Zerah of Th Thamar. And Perez begat Ezram. And Ezram begat Aram. And Aram begat Aminadab, and Aminadab begat Nashon. Uh -huh. And Nashon begat Salmon. And Salmon begat Boaz of Rechab, and Boaz begat Obed of Ruth. And Obed begat Jesse. And Jesse begat David the so king. So we read verse 5 again. Verse 5. And Salmon begat Boaz of Rechab, and Boaz begat Obed of Ruth. Obed of Ruth, go ahead. And Obed begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David the king, and David the king begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias. Right, Bathsheba. So once again, Aminadab um, had a son. A son's sister was Aaron's wife. So you can marry outside the tribe. Now, why did they push that doctrine? Israel had lands allotted to them. Okay? You cannot, if you were to marry 
for example, if a man, let's say a man had all daughters, right? Now, if his daughters go off and marry some of another tribe, who the land go to? It's lost to the, to the husband because what's the wife's is the husband. So now that, that, that tribe loses that allotment of land. You understand? So, if, for example, let's say Ephraim has a bunch of daughters, and then his daughters go and marry Judah or whatever. Now Judah takes possession of Ephraim's land. You understand? So if a man had a bunch of daughters, he had to marry within the tribe to keep the land within or allotted within the tribe. That was the instance where it said you must stick to your own tribe. You follow? That was when the rule applied. Here's a question now. Here's a magic question. Who in here has land in Israel? I wait. Maybe maybe I'll be maybe I'll be amazed. I don't know. Just wait. Just give y'all a while to think about it. Give it a few more seconds. Okay. No, no no one. Okay. Who knew? So at again, you had to have land. Land allotted to you for that rule to apply. How many of you in here have a record of your genealogies going back to your tribe? How many of you have that? No? No one? Okay. All right. So... What the point is that, the point I'm making is this. We know based upon the curses, based upon the attributes given to each tribe, who Israel is today and where they would be, right? Deuteronomy 33, Genesis 49, Ezra 13, we know this, right? Now, we know for now, as far as we can go, well, my father's a Judah. And the angels show up, listen, no, you're not Judah, you're a Gad, go over there. Some of y'all are going to be crying, oh, no, no, i will be happy there's going in any gate, as long as it's not a heathen gate or a slave gate or... or, or <laughs> I don't want to go to them gates. But the point is, is that you'll be happy going to any gate. However, you cannot call anyone a bastard under any circumstance unless you have record of your genealogy going back as far as Nehemiah and Ezra. You cannot call on that because you have a number of our people walking around who don't know even know who their father is. So do you denounce them? Who are you to denounce them? Who do you know your father is? How far can you go back in your generations? But you're going to use Ancestry.com? You're going to use that? Please tell me you're going to use that, please. Please don't, please, don't, don't do that. I'm going to have Esau swap your mouth with a Q-tip. Yeah, according to this, you're the, the Nigerian tribe or you're Cameroon or you're 80% European. You'd be, some, of y'all, some of y'all be like, yay! You hear that. But no, you cannot rely on that. Our genealogical record falls upon the curses given to us, the signs and so forth, the attributes given us in Genesis 49, which will be false in the last days. Jacob gave us our, line- our record of genealogy. He gave it to us in his deathbed. Genesis 49, he gave it to us. Moses gave it to us in Deuteronomy 33, Jerel 3. Ezra's gave it to us, Ezra 13. That's our record right there. The curses are a clear record. No one fits that but us. No one. That's our record. That's all you need. Y'all understand? So Christ said, my sheep hear my voice. Let's go to 1 Samuel 14, 49. Let's get some more. The book of 1 Samuel 14, verse 39. For as the Lord liveth, which saveth Israel, though it be in Jonathan, my son, he shall surely die. Hold on a second, I'm sorry. That's 1449? Oh, you said 49, sorry. Yeah, 1449. The book of 1 Samuel 14, verse 49. Now the sons of Saul were Jonathan and Ishuai and Melchishau. Yeah, Melchishua. Melchishua. And the names of his two daughters were these. The name of the firstborn, Merab, and the name of the younger, Michal. Michal, go ahead. No, I'm trying. That's all I want. I'll get um, 1820. Same book. So, the, so Saul had... Two daughters, Merab and Michal. 1 Samuel 18 and verse 20. And Michal, Saul's daughter, loved David. And they told Saul, and the thing pleased him. Now, was David a man of the Lord? 
Now, David could have said, well, now, that's, that's good and all, but I can't marry you because you're not Judah. I can't marry you. That's wicked, sis. Fall back. Get off me. Don't sweat me. Leave me alone. <laughs> but he didn't do that. Go ahead. Read it again. And Michal, Saul's daughter, loved David. And they told Saul, and the thing pleased him. Go ahead. And Saul said, I will give him her, that she may be a snare to him. <laughs> Saul was wicked as hell. Because Saul knew his daughter was evil. And Saul didn't like David. So Saul said, again, take my wicked daughter. Take her. Nigga, you. Hate you. Go ahead. <laughs> and that the hand of the Philistines may be against him. Wherefore Saul said to David, Thou shalt this day be my son-in-law in the one of the twain. So, even though that was Saul's evil intention, David, being a man of the law, would have known not to marry her based upon her being another tribe. David married her anyway. Go to verse 27. Verse 27. Wherefore David arose and went, he and his men, and slew the Philistines two hundred men. And David wrought, brought their foreskins, and they gave them in full tale to the king. And he might be the king's son-in-law. And Saul gave him a call, his daughter, to wife. So, you understand what Saul did. Saul said, if you want to marry my daughter, go and kill two hundred Philistines. Come back with their foreskins. Two hundred, now I'll give you my daughter. He's hoping to get killed. David came back with that dowry. Here you go. Saul's like, that, that take was, her. That was a nasty dowry. And that was a nasty, disgusting <laughs> dowry, too. But David loved that sister that much. He went and did it. But Saul was evil. But the point is, is that David loved that sister. And at that moment, she did love him. So she went the hell off. She was evil. She went off. But just that shows you that Israel intermarried. That's the point I'm bringing out. That, that, then you read when Saul was killed, um, David took Saul's wives and all of that. Took them as, all of that. And became his wives. They were Benjamin. You understand? So I'm showing you that Israel intermarried. The tribes intermarried. There was no sin. Unless, of course, the man had, a man had a bunch of daughters, then he could not do that. If a man has sons and daughters, he can do it. He can give his daughter to another tribe because he had sons that can maintain the land, that, that, can, that can maintain that allotment of land within the tribe. You understand what I'm saying? That's the only time it was off. I think that's in Numbers, Numbers 27 somewhere about a um, Manassite that had bunch of daughters. And there was an issue. I think his name was Zelophadad. He had a bunch of daughters. And he was told his daughters were going to marry within his tribe because he didn't have any sons to allot the land. They didn't marry within their tribe to keep the land within Manasseh. That's the only instance it's referring to that these fools on YouTube refer to. Zelophadad. Only because he had daughters. That's why I used that. Genesis 38 Genesis 38 and verse 1. This is before Moses once again. Now even though you read it was, it was wrong to marry outside of your own. There were occasions where our forefathers did the wrong things. Not all of our forefathers are all holy and perfect and righteous. Some of them did foolish things. They were men. Genesis 38 and verse, verse, one, verse 2. Genesis 38 and verse 2. And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain... No, verse 1. Verse 1. And it came to pass at that time that Judah went down from his brethren and turned into a certain Adulamite, whose name was Hera. Yeah. And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite, mm -hmm. whose name was Shua. And he took her and went in unto her. Uh -huh. And she conceived and bare a son. And he called his name Ur. Uh -huh. Read that in Chronicles. Go ahead. And she conceived again and bare a son. And she called his name Onan. He was evil too. Go ahead. And she yet conceived and bare a son. And she called his, called his name Shalah. Shalah, go ahead. And he, and he was at Chazet when she bare him. So he had these three boys by a heathen woman. Now, let's see what he was. Let's see if he was a heathen or a bastard. His name was Shalah or Shalah. Genesis 46 and verse 12. Genesis 46, 12. Go there first. Let me see what that says. Genesis 46 and verse 12. Yep. And the sons of Judah, Ur and Onan. And no, Shal no, read verse 11. Verse 11. And the sons of Levi, Gershom, Kohath, and Miz Mizraim. Uh-huh. Merari. Merari. Go ahead. And the sons of Judah, Ur and Onan. And Shalah, and Perez and Zerah, but Ur and Onan died in the land of Canaan. Right. And the sons of Perez were Hazron and 
Hamul. And Hezron, remember Hezron begat Aminadab, Aminadab, and so forth. His sister married Aaron. All right? Go, now go to, um, where had you before? To Numbers 26 and 20. So it says the sons of Judah. Numbers 26, verse 20. And the sons of Judah, after their families were. Wait, wait, read again. And the sons of Judah, after their families the were. Sons of Judah, after their families. Go ahead. Were of Shalah, the family of the Shelonites, of Faraz, the family of the Pharisites, of Zerah, the family of the Zahites. So Shela was considered a child of Judah. He was a Judite. His mom was Canaan. But he was still an Israelite. It does not change anything. Y'all follow? So this he should not be listed here as Judah. He should be listed as under list list of bastards. There should be a bastard list. Where Ephraim should be there. Um, um, Manasseh should be there. Um, Gershom, Gershom, Eleazar should be there. Who else I mentioned? Who else? David. David should be there. Solomon should. Listen, listen, the list goes on and on. You are who your father is. It's all throughout the Bible. Numbers 1 makes it clear. Families of your fathers. Pedigree of your fathers. House of your fathers. Over and over and over again. Exodus 12 and 37. Now, the doctrine is that you can become a Jew through conversion. That the heathens were converted. They became Jews through conversion. You can just convert. So you can pretty much... Uh, so subscribe to Hinduism and be automatically become East Indian. You can convert to Buddhism and automatically become Chinese. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't understand how that works. Uh, no, I don't know. A religion could change a nationality. A nationality is different from a religion. It's two different things. Two very different things, depending on the context. Exodus 12 and 37. Exodus 12 and 37. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sakoth, about 600,000 on foot that were men, beside children. Mm -hmm. This is when Israel left out of Egypt. And a mixed multitude went up also with them. And the heathens that saw and acknowledged our God, when they saw what the, our God did to the Egyptians, they said, can we go with you? And he was like, hey, come on. The Lord didn't deliver them. He delivered us. And those nations who were under Egyptian rule as well, among, amongst, well, aside from Israel, Decide to leave with us. They weren't saved, but they acknowledged our God and came behind with us. You understand? Go ahead. And flocks and herds, even very much cattle. So I want. Let's go to Numbers 11 and 4. Let's see what they brought with them. Numbers 11 and 4. The same mixed multitude. The book of Numbers, chapter 11, verse 4. So after these heathen left with us, watch what they did. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a luster. And the children of Israel also wept again. And so, said, the, so the mixed multitude had influence over us. And they're lusting to go back to Egypt. Watch this. And said, who shall give us flesh to eat? We remembered the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely. The cucumbers and the melons. And the leeks and the onions and the garlic. So the mixed multitude caused Israel to go, man, remember that time the Big Mac they had in Egypt? They had McDonald's. They had freaking Boston Market over there. We are eating bread and water. This is some bull. This nigga Moses, man, he brought us in this desert to die. So that's what they were complaining. The heathen were complaining first. And then they influenced Israel through their complaints. Because mixed multitude around us is a problem. That was an issue with us. Go to Leviticus 25 and 44. When they came out with us, what became of them? When they came out with us, did they become our equals? Did we become brothers in arms? Let's see. Leviticus 25 and verse 44. And it will be so again. You know, you heathens are trying to dip and dodge like Mayweather, trying to avoid it. They're not going to avoid it. It's inevitable for you. So we're going to read it. We're going to read it for you. So I know you're watching. Leviticus 25 and verse 44. Yep. Both thy bondmen and thy bondmaids, which thou shalt have, shall be of the heathen bond, that are round bond, about you. Bondmen and bondmaids. Go ahead. Shall be what? Which thou shalt have shall be of the heathen that are round about you. Of them shall ye buy bondmen and bondmaids. Bondmaids means slaves. I'm going to explain what it means. Read on. Moreover, of the children of the strangers that, so, that do sojourn among you, of them shall ye buy. 
and of their families that are, are with you, which they begat in your land, and they shall be your possession. Which they begat in your land, they shall be your possession. Go ahead. And ye shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you, mm -hmm. to inherit them for a possession. They shall be your bondmen forever. She what? Forever. They shall be your bondmen forever. That is their purpose. Their purpose is to be our bondmen and bondwomen forever. Right now, I always say, I said it a long time ago, I'll say it again. The nations today are what you refer, I refer to as slaves on the loose. They're like a wild dog running around, their master's lost, and they're running around doing all kind of wild stuff. But eventually, we're going to get the leash again and put you right back on it again. That's what's going to happen. That's, that, that's the end result. That's the end all overall for you. you just embrace it. It's okay. Uh, read on. But over your brethren, the children of Israel, ye shall not rule one over another with rigor. With hard bondage, which the heathen were going to be serving in. Hard, harder bondage. Because we had Hebrew servants, Hebrew maid servants and men servants, and we had bond servants and bond maid. Bond men and bond women. You had Hebrew servant, handmaids, and we had hand servants. Those are the, our own people. We didn't give them hard labor. But the heathens... We gave y'all hard labor. That's the difference. There was a bias in that. Because y'all ain't us. Esther 8 now. Let's go to the magic scripture they use. Esther 8.15. Let's go there. So remember, when Israel came out of Egypt, those nations that were also in Egypt serving bondage under the Egyptians as well, want to come. they saw the, the, the plagues and the wonders and miracles the Lord did for us. They wanted to come behind us. And when they came out from along with us, they became our serve, our bondmen and bondwomen. Not our equals and buddies and pals. They became possessions. They became an inheritance. When they died, their children became our possession. Perpetual slaves. That was their purpose. And while they were living in our land, they were following our rules. Doing what we want them to do in order to stay there. You understand? They were our tenants, pretty much. That's the eight. Hold on, let me get it. So what the so-called Jew, Israeli, does today is he says, well, yes, yeah, see, Esther 8, they became Jews, see? So you can become a Jew. No, because the, our bondmen and bondwomen, they became a Jew. I mean, they fought our laws and customs. They fought, they became a, a Jew by our ways, by religion, not by nationality. Hold on, we read it. I get it. This Bible's new one. Trying to find it. Go ahead. Eight and verse. Eight and verse uh, 15. I got it. Esther chapter 8 and verse 15. Now, to bring out a speed, you had a man named Haman, Edomite, once again, trying to kill us off the earth. The, the Mosai turned the tables on him, and he, he ended up getting killed and so forth. And as a celebration of that, we call Purim, um, or Mordecai's day. And eventually, um, in place of Haman, the Edomite, who tried to kill us off, the Mosai had him killed. And put Mordecai, our brother, Benjamite brother, Mordecai, in his place. All right? And Esther was the queen under King Artaxerxes. So he had Israelites, basically second rulers over the kingdom of Persia. So Israel pretty much was ruling under the Persian regime. Y'all follow? We had power, pretty much. 815, read that. And Mordecai... So I'm sorry. So the point I'm bringing is that whenever Israel had power or was were ruling, there were three conditions, two conditions I'll say for now, I remember in which Israel would bring the laws to other nations or were an influence to other nations. One instance is when Israel was ruling and our influence spread and nations want to follow behind it. That's one instance we had power. We had slaves that came under our regime, dwelt among us, to keep our laws. You can't be um, among us eating pork and shrimp. That can't happen. So as long as you remain among us, you abide by our laws and rules, you can stay among us. But they were our servants. That's one instance. This instance here, Israel was in power again. And the heathen, we're going to read it right now, the instance again. 815, watch this. And Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel of blue and white, and with a great crown of gold, and with a garment of fine linen and purple. And the city of Shashan rejoiced and was glad. Go ahead, because Mordecai was put under the king, second under the king. Go ahead. The Jews had light and gladness and joy and honor. And in every province... And in every city, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a good day. 
And many of the people of the land became Jews. Why? For the fear of the Jews fell upon them. That's why. Because we had, a, we had liberty to, do, to keep our laws under the king or the Xerxes. Because Esther was queen. Mordecai was second under the king. So basically, he was king number two. So out of fear of us, they said, well, listen, we're going to follow your laws then. Because we, they were afraid of us. We had power at that time. Likewise, we came out of Egypt. We had power at that time. The second instance where it, um, Israel let Nathans learn our laws is when Israel was in, ref, was in um, exile. We were living among ourselves. And we would keep our laws among ourselves. And the heathen would watch us and go, wow, look how they conduct themselves among, among each other. We want to do that. And so to keep the peace, we would share our wisdom with the other nations among us so that all nations within that area would learn how to keep the laws and there will be no confusion in, in the land. So when Israel encountered, for example, Muhammad, Muhammad saw the Jews conducted themselves. He said, okay, you want, you want to learn how you, you want to learn how you guys conduct yourselves. We said, fine. We gave understanding. What did Muhammad do? Turned against us. Then we, um, a lot of us, we fled into the areas of Turkey and so forth and came across your Khazars. We resided among them also a minority. They saw we lived. We want to follow that also. Then we said, okay, here you go. What did they do? They turned against us and became Jews now. And became us all of a sudden. You understand? That's what the heathen do. So whenever Israel is trying to stay to themselves and share, we, we figure if we share what we, our wisdom with the nations among us, and we, and we all live in the same area, keeping the same things, there will be no confusion. No pagans, no idols. Everyone's doing the same thing in the same landmass, no confusion. But in, the, in, that, in instances where Israel was not in power or ruling, where we shared that wisdom with the other nations, they would turn on us. The Edomite Khazars did it. it um, Muhammad, the Ishmaelites, they did it. Another example, on this side of the world, the pilgrims. Israel on this side of the world, we will, how, how do we live here? How do we survive this? I'll show you. You show them how to cultivate the land. Here you go. Thanks. Plow! Kill us, took over. Yeah, you guys go to the reservation over there. Same thing again. Same exact thing. We always, get, we always buy ourselves. We always take ourselves in the behind. The Bible says never trust your enemies. And a lot of Israel did not follow that. Those are the two instances where Israel would share them, their wisdom among the nations or their majority. If they were in the majority, we would, we would nations would convert like John Icranus. We, when we were ruling and Jerusalem was expanding, the nations, that, the nations had to, would force either to convert or get put out or get killed out the land. Only when we had power or when we were on a, on our, on a, at our lowest would we would share our wisdom with the other nations. When we had power, it was beneficial. When we didn't, it bit us in the behind in the end. Those are the two instances. In this instance, we have power. In the instance of Exodus 12, when the heathen came out with us, mixed multitude came out with us, we have power also. Y'all understand what I'm saying? All right. Nine verse one. Nine and verse of uh, one. Esther nine verse one. Now in the twenty, the, now in the twelfth month, that is the month Adar, on the thirteenth day of the same, when the king's commandment and his decree drew near to put to be put in execution and the day that the enemies of the Jews hoped to have power over them, though it was turned to the contrary, that the Jews had rule over them that hated the them. The Jews what? Had rule over them that hated them. So when the Jews had rule over them that hated them, the nations were, were forced to do what? Follow our ways. And then the concept is referred to as they became Jews. I mean, they were following our ways, converted. You understand? I mean, their ways, the heathen ways were converted to our ways. That's what it means it says became Jews. They didn't become ethnically Jews. They didn't become racially Jews, but by their ways and traditions, they became Jews. Herod was an Idumian, okay? But he was a Jew. He said he was an uh, Edom, uh, Edomite Jew. You understand what I'm saying? He was not an Israelite, but he followed our ways. Well, sort of. You understand what I'm saying? All right. Let's go to... Nehemiah 13. Nehemiah chapter 13 and verse 3. Now it came to pass when they had heard the law that they separated from Israel all the mixed multitude. See what they did? We got, rid of them. we got rid of the mixed multitude. They were causing too many problems. Go ahead. Next. Um, and that's all I want. Get 2 Corinthians 6 17. That law still applies even now. To remove yourself from the other nations. 
the book of 2 Corinthians 6 and 17. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. The unclean thing is the nations and their customs. The unclean thing is the nations and their customs. Touch not the unclean thing. Go to Isaiah 2 and 1. No, 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 I don't want that. Do I want that one? Yeah, Isaiah 2 and 1. The book of Isaiah, chapter 2 and verse 1. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amaz, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills. Now on, and that goes to Israel being on top, ruling over them that hate them the way it was in Esther. Difference is you want to have Persia or nation over us. We'll be the top nation. Because during the time of Esther, even though we had rule, the Persians were the dominant of the empire. That was their empire that we were given rulership, give rulership in over everybody else based upon Esther being queen and Mordecai being second to the king. We were still under someone, another, a foreign nation's dominion. In this instance, Israel is above, the top of the mountains being other nations and shall be exalted above the hills being smaller nations or being above all nations once again. The way we were predestined to be. Go ahead. And all nations shall flow into it. Go ahead. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his path. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Read you again. And many people shall go and say, Come ye. And let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. So you may think it's talking, it says, and all nations shall flow unto it. Does that talk about all heathen nations? It's referring to our own nation. I'm going to prove that. Um, let's get uh, Jeremiah. No. Get Jeremiah 31 and 6. To prove that. Flow unto it. All nations flow unto it. Jeremiah 31 and 6. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 31 and verse 6. For there shall be a day that the watchman above, upon the mount Ephraim shall cry. Uh -huh. Arise ye, and let us go up to Zion unto the Lord our God. Upon so yeah, watching upon Mount Ephraim shall cry. Arise, let us go up to Mount Zion unto the Lord our God. Go back to Isaiah 2 again. Read verse 3. Isaiah 2 and verse 3. And many shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. Let's so say it again. Huh? Go ahead. To the house of the God of Jacob. Go to Jeremiah 50, verse 4 and 5. Jeremiah 50, verse 4. In those days and in that time, saith the Lord, the children of Israel shall uh -huh. come. They and the children of Judah together. The children of Judah together. Go ahead. Going and weeping, they shall go and seek the Lord their God. They shall ask the way to Zion with their faces thitherward, saying, Come, and let us join ourselves to the Lord in a perpetual covenant that shall not be forgotten. Come, let us join ourselves to the Lord. Saying the exact same thing again. Saying it again. Go to Zechariah 2.11. Zechariah 2.11. Verse 11. And many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day. And shall be my people. And I will dwell in the midst of thee. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto thee. Let's talk about us again. Get Jeremiah on. Uh, there we go. Jeremiah 31 verse 11. It says in Isaiah 2 and 1. You got Isaiah 2 again, the bottom part? Because I missed that part. Isaiah 2 and verse uh, the, 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 no, the 3. Yeah. About flowing, about them flowing. Uh, I, I, for, Isaiah 2 and 2. Isaiah 2 and 2. And yeah. it shall come to pass in that the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. All nations shall flow into it. Now go to Jeremiah 31 and 12. Let's go and explain what that is. All nations shall flow into it. 31 verse, 31 verse 11. Jeremiah 31, 11 and 12. 
Jeremiah 31, verse 11. For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob and resumed, ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than, the, than he. The, he. the heathens got it. Therefore, shall, therefore they shall come and sing in the height of Zion and shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord. What they do? Shall flow together. The house of Jacob shall do what? Flow together. They shall flow together where? To the goodness of the Lord. Go ahead. For wheat and for wine and for oil and for the young of the flock and of the herd. And their soul shall be as a watered garden. Wisdom. And they shall not sorrow anymore at all. No more captivity. So they shall flow together. It's referring to the redeemed Jacob. Redeemed of Jacob. So go back to Isaiah 2 now. Verse 3. Uh, yeah. Isaiah chapter 2 verse 3. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law. Out of Zion shall go forth the law, meaning order. Go ahead. And the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Verse 4. And he shall judge among the nations. And shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat, beat their swords unto plowshares. They is us. They're going to beat the other nation's weapons into cultivating instruments. They're going to go from fighting against us to servants. Pruning instruments are used to, to serve, to, to cultivate land, to work. From, war, from warriors to workers, they're going to turn them into. Beat again. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares. And their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war any more. Go ahead. O house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord. Just talking about all Israel right there. So again, we're reading about Israel coming together, being established above all nations and forcing the nations to serve the laws of God. So they're going to follow the laws of Godless. Let's show you out of Christ's own mouth. Go to Revelation chapter 2, yep. verse 25. Because ain't no, going to be no kumbaya and all the nations coming together. Whoever ain't Israel going to bow down. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 25. But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. We have the understanding that we're Israel, and we got to hold fast and keep the commandments till Christ returns. But there's people on YouTube trying to take that away from us. That's why he says, hold it fast till I come. You're a stupid Negro if you let some dumb people that don't understand the Bible start making you to question your ethnicity and your connection to the Most High. Read on. And he that overcometh. Because we got to overcome our sins, ourselves, the things that are in the world, our family members, the wicked people around us. Read on. And keep up my works until the end. Because the campaign now on YouTube is to make you stop the works. The number one target is IUIC. Don't listen to them. They're liars. We've exposed them. We show you the 12 tribes chart. They're marrying heathen. I saw a video this week of them. They go to the audience and look at anybody that's light skin hair and say they're white. I'm done. Everybody. They got your picture up. They got everybody's picture up. They go to the woman. They took a picture of me and my daughter and said I got a heathen wife. How old I look and I'm married to a... They took my daughter's picture and said that's my wife. You stupid Negroes. And there's women, there's a woman doing that and another guy doing that. That's okay, they, Sam. You just look young. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> they search through all our videos and our photos and they say that we're mar marrying heathens. And they hate Hispanics. Mm -hmm. They hate Northern Kingdom. Read on. And keeping my works until the end. Because they're trying to stop us from keeping these works until the end. Read on. To him will I give power over the nations. If we're all equal, why will Christ promise us power over the nations? Yep. This is our Christ's mouth. Yep. Your Savior. Yep. We wouldn't need power over the nations if we're all equal and we're all kumbaya together. So when we get that power, what are we going to do? Read on. 
and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. We're going to use a rod of iron to rule over them. And what we're going to do? As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers. We're going to break them into serving our God. Because they got a lot of mouth right now. They got a lot of beliefs right now. They got a lot of gods. They got a lot of talk. So that's why I don't do a lot of talking now. I'm waiting for this day to come. So anybody that don't listen can get their behind beat. Yep. Okay? A glory in thinking about that day. Read on. Even as I received the my father. Because the most high going to give his son power. And he says, I'm going to give it to you. And we're going to whoop people's behind. Romans 8.16. Same vein, too. I'm going to go there, too. Romans 8, 16. Romans 8 and 16. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. The Spirit itself is this Bible. Bear witness with our spirit. When we read the Bible, when we read the curses and the conditions of the people within this book and the curses, you know, that's talk about us. No other nation can relate to that. The you know, lynchings, the hangings, separating from your family, the slave ships. No other nation can relate to that. They don't bear witness with their spirit. It's not for them. Go ahead. That's heavy. Read it one more time. The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit. Our is singular for us. Mm -hmm. Our spirit. That's not for everybody. It don't say we're all nations that what? That we are the children of God. How did all the other nations magically become children of God now? Because you're listening to idiots break the Bible down. They hate you. That realize if you can't beat them, join them. So they want to join us by saying we're Israel, we're part of God's kingdom also. Right. Go ahead. Get Romans 7 and 1, please. See who he's talking to. Romans 7 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. Know ye not, brethren? For Go us. Up. Read again. Know ye not, brethren? Know ye not what? Brethren. What? For I speak. No, no, no. Read again. I'm sorry. Know ye not, brethren? Brethren. Watch this. For I speak to them that know the law. Stop. For I speak to them that know the law. Who are you talking to? I'm talking to, to the Romans. <laughs> Romans 1, please. We're going to go to the very beginning of the book. Romans 1, and we're going to read verse mm, 1. Romans chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, a servant of no, Jesus. No, 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 no. Verse 7. I'm sorry. Verse 7. Verse 7. To all that be in Rome. Stop. To all that be in Rome, because remember, it's a letter to the Romans, right? So he's talking to Edom, right? Let's see. Go ahead. Beloved of God, called to be saints. Stop. Called to be what? Called to be saints. Psalms 148, verse 14. The book of Psalms 148 and 14. Mm -hmm. He also exalted the horn of his people. The praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel. Who? Even of the children of Israel. So the saints are the children of Israel. Romans 1 and 7 again. Romans 1. Verse 7. Verse 7. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. Called to be saints. Called to be saints. John, Romans 2. And verse, hold on, I want verse 17. Romans 2, verse 17. No, read verse 1. Then we go jump to verse 17. Romans chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest. For whether, wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest do it the same thing. Verse 17. Verse 17. Behold, thou art called a Jew, and restest in the law, and makest thy boast of God. I thought Paul was writing to Romans. Thou callest thyself a Jew. Thou callest thyself a Jew. He's writing to Jews in Rome. You call yourself a Jew. He's writing to Romans. Jews in Rome. Where you get Romans, Edomite, Edomite Romans from? Thou callest thyself a Jew, and restest in the law. Romans 7, verse 1 again, please. Romans chapter 7 and verse 1. Know ye not, brethren? For I speak to them that know the law. So he's talking to Jews. I speak to them that know the law. So he's speaking to the Jews that resided in Rome. 
Acts 28, all the Acts, when you read Acts, the chapter, the last chapter is 28, explains Paul was in Rome talking to the Israelites in Rome. He sent letters to them while on house arrest in Rome, to the synagogues in Rome. <sighs> Romans 8, 16, please. The Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So the we, the our, are the Jews he's writing to in chapter 1, verse 7, 2, verse 1, and 17, 7, verse 1, that know the law. He's writing to Jews in Rome. So he's saying the Spirit, it says the Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Next verse. And if children, then heirs. And if we're the children of God, then we are heirs of God. Go ahead. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. And we are joint heirs of Christ. Go ahead. If so be that we suffer with him, then we may be also glorified together. So when you are a joint heir, you receive what is called a joint inheritance. What did the Messiah receive as an inheritance? Let's get Psalms 2, which goes in conjunction with Revelations 2. And 25. Psalms 2, verse 6, please. Nations want to be part of Israel? You can be part of Israel. We're going we're gonna to help you become part of us. Let me show you how they're going to do it. The book verse of, 6. The book of Psalms, chapter 2, verse 6. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Go ahead. I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I, have I begotten thee. This is the Messiah speaking through David. Saying what the Lord said to him in the heavens. This is, read again. Thou art what? Thou, thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Verse 8. Watch this. Ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. For thine what? Inheritance. So if we're joint heirs, what do we get? Heathen. That's like right. in Leviticus 25 and 44. Your bondman for how long? Forever. Go ahead. And the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. And the planet for your possession. Go ahead. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. That's not familiar. Same Thou shalt Christ break said. them with a rod of Same iron. Same thing Christ said. They're going to get their behinds. Whoop. Go ahead. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. That's what the Lord said to us in Revelations. If you overcome, you'll receive that pleasure that I'm going to get. You are joint heirs of that. So what is the equality in that? Where is it? Hey, Isaiah 14. I'm going to get there. I'm going there next. That's where I'm going. I was alluding to that. Isaiah 14. The book of Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. So they're going to cleave. They're going to keep the laws. Go ahead. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. Go ahead. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. We shall take them captives whose captives we were. Go ahead. And they shall rule over, the, over their oppressors. And we shall rule over our oppressors. Go ahead. With a rod of iron. If they try to pop off, they're going to dash into pieces and take great joy in doing it too. Go ahead. Verse 3. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear. Read verse 3 again. And it shall come to pass that in, the, in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow. He shall give you rest from your sorrow. Watch this. And from thy fear. Your fear. And from the hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve. Now, rumor has it that this happened already. Give me Ezra 2 and 65. They use this now. Let me help you out. I know you guys, I know you're just thirsty for knowledge. You want to teach you. You want to teach you. We're going to help you out with what that means. Ezra 2 verse 65. That happened. You guys are going off. That happened already. Really? Ezra. Now, Ezra was doing what captivity? Persian captivity. The book so, of wait, wait, so the oppressors are still over us in Ezra 2, right? <laughs> no, maybe they weren't. 265? 50, 60. 65. 65. Yeah. Ezra chapter 2, verse 65. Mm -hmm. Beside their servants and their maids 
of whom there were 7,330 and seven. And there were among them 200 singing men and singing women. Now, those servants and maids were our own people, not the other nations. But they used to go see as Isaiah 14. So the nation, our nations were under them right here in Ezra. Now, during Ezra's time, who was also who was with Ezra during his time? Nehemiah, right? Okay, let's get Nehemiah 937. Remember Isaiah 14 said, you shall receive rest from your sorrow, from your fear, from the hard bondage you knew and made to serve. Remember that? You'll be free from that. Remember that? Okay. Nehemiah 9. Let's see what, ne maybe Nehemiah and Ezra are different spirits. Maybe Nehemiah was the devil the Bible speaks of. Nehemiah 9 and 37. Let's see what Nehemiah said regarding that condition during Ezra's time, when these servants and maids were among us, which are our own people, by the way. Nehemiah 9, verse 37. And it yieldeth much... No, no, be verse 36. Verse 36. Behold, we nope, are... No, sorry, 35, I'm sorry. 35. 35. Yeah. For they have not served thee in their kingdom. We did not serve the Lord in our own kingdom. Go ahead. And in thy great goodness that thou gavest them, and in the large and fat land which thou gavest before them, neither turn they from their wicked works. Go ahead. Behold, we are servants this day. Stop. Behold, Nehemiah says, we are servants this day. Now, Isaiah 14 says we'll be free from that. We will rule over our oppressors. We'll have rest. But it says here we're servants this day during Ezra's time. Go ahead. And for the land that thou gavest unto our fathers to eat the fruit thereof and the good thereof. Behold, we are servants in it. That's not what Isaiah said in Isaiah 14. He said we will have power over our oppressors and be rest and have rest. And put the nations and bring nations to our place. But here it says we have the, the, read again, 36 again. Behold, we are servants this day. And for the land that thou gavest unto our fathers to eat the fruit thereof and the good thereof, behold, we are servants in it. We are servants or slaves in our own land. It's going to say right here, next verse. And it yieldeth much increase unto the kings whom thou hast set over us because of our sins. Wait, that's not what Isaiah 14 says. Over the kings whom thou hast set over us because of our sins. That also they have dominion over our body. What is that called? That's called slavery. So how could that be Isaiah 14 fulfilled? Ezra and Nehemiah, Nehemiah was uh, Ezra's contemporary. They were um, among each other. So why is Nehemiah saying this? If we were free during that time of Isaiah 14. How is that Isaiah 14? Don't make no damn sense. Read again. 37 again. And it yieldeth much increase unto the kings whom thou hast set over us because of our sins. Go ahead. Also they have dominion over our bodies. Go ahead. And over our cattle at their pleasure. And we are in great distress. The, no, we are in great rest. We are in great distress. That's not Isaiah 14 fulfilled. Stop talking. <laughs> Shh. Stop talking. You sound stupid. Stop. So the, Stay out of the Bible. Stop the, it. The argument is that they got freedom. Is that, that's the argument that they're saying think? based upon Ezra 265, where it says servants and maids, we had servants and maids already during that time in Persia. Exactly. But that's not what it says in Nehemiah here, in the same exact time. So let's watch this. Let's go to Ezra chapter 1, verse 1. Because they're talking about that we were established then, and that's when we got freedom, and that's when we're allowed to do whatever we want. Let's see what the Bible says. The book of Ezra, chapter 1 and verse 1. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. Because Jeremiah had already prophesied that this was going to happen. Read on. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia. What happened? Stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia. So it wasn't that Israel broke free from the Persians and got what they wanted. Read it again, what happened? The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia. Because it was prophecy that the Lord was going to ease them up off of us a little bit to do what? Read on. That he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing saying, Thus saith Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven have given me all the kingdoms of the earth. So he was ruling still. He had everything on lock. He shut everything down. But the Lord put the spirit on him to do what? Read on. And he have charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem. But he wanted a house built for the Israelites in Jerusalem. So what happened? Read on. Which is in Judah. 
Who is there among you of all his people? His God be with him. And let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah. So that idiot that made that statement about we already was ruling and doing everything, it was already in prophecy that God was going to put it on the heart of the king to let the Israelites have a place to worship because everything was taken from us. Read on. And build the house of the Lord God of Israel. That's why he asked who among you of the Israelites that still believe in the Most High wants to go back and do it. Wants to go back and rebuild. Okay, it wasn't that we were free and we could do whatever we wanted. Read on. He is the God which is in Jerusalem. Because the heart of the kings are in God's hands. Yep. I forgot what scripture says that. Yep. So he could easily make the, the kings do whatever they want. So there was plenty of times, even now, he allowed the kings of the earth to give us certain liberties so that we could build the nation of Israel again. It's the same thing while you see Israel united in Christ. If you left it up to the other nations, they wouldn't let us wear no purple, get no building, teach our people the laws, teach you Israelites. But the Lord put the hearts on them. Certain freedoms, certain laws were put in place by the Lord having the spirit to say, you know what? Let me let these people ease up so that they could build. The same thing that you see here now in Ezra is the same thing that's happened with us now. Okay? They were not free. Yeah. Get Ezra 9 verse 8. This goes to Ezra said, when Nehemiah said, restore on bondage this day. See what Ezra says. I forgot this one. Ezra chapter 9 verse 8. And now for a little space, grace hath been shewed from the Lord our God to leave us a remnant to escape and to give us a nail in his holy place. Watch this. That our God may lighten our eyes. Give us understanding. And give us a little reviving in our bondage. And give us a little bit of leniency while in our captivity. A little light reviving in our bondage. This is what Ezra saying, in our bondage. That's not what Isaiah 14 says. That's right. Next verse. For we are bondmen. That's not what Isaiah 14 says. Isaiah 14, give us Isaiah 14 one more time, please. Get it one more time. So we're not confused. 14 and... You know what I want about um, bondmen. Captives, as captives they were. Yeah, 14, 3. Four, Isaiah 14, verse 3. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. Go back to Ezra, please. 9 and verse 9 again. For we are bondmen. Go ahead. Go ahead. We were bondmen. For we were bondmen, yet our God have not forsaken us in our bondage. Go ahead. But have extended mercy unto us in the sight of the king of Persia. Cyrus. Cyrus, Artaxerxes, Darius. Go ahead. To give us a revival. Reviving. reviving. To set up the house of our God. That's the little reviving. While in our bondage, the Persians, the most I gave us to break through the Persian kings to rebuild the second temple. Go ahead. And to repair the desolations thereof. Go ahead. And to give us a wall in Judah and in Jerusalem. Which Nehemiah was behind the construction of. That's what it's talking about. They were still in captivity in this verse. There's no confusion. That's not referring to Isaiah 14. Stop using that. Get Zechariah 8.23. So again, you, you must understand. These heathens are trying their best to make, to make America appear as if we're free here. You're free. As long as you're on a bottom and believe in white Jesus, you can all become a Jew. A Jew is not a race of people. It's all Greek Hellenism. Zechariah 8 and 23. 22. The book of Zechariah 8 and verse 22. Yea, many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, In those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew. The bottom of your garment is a Jew. Go ahead. Saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. That's what you read about in Exodus 12 and 38 and, 30, and 37 and 38. They saw a guy, they saw the Most High bring forth, bring America to this to destruction. They see the Most High put us on top of all nations and we're ruling. They're just going to come down. Listen, we want to serve your God too. 
Now, ain't gonna be, ain't gonna be no, oh, well, I wanna, you can be a convert, I be a convert, we be converts together. That ain't in the Bible. You ain't converting nothing. I ain't converting nothing. Nothing. One thing gonna be converted is you going from free to slave. Exactly. That's the conversion. That's the only conversion. From being free to being a slave. Free to slave. That's the conversion you're gonna get. Okay. That's it. So we're not gonna play games with you, other nation. We're not playing with y'all. Y'all cannot come with these doctrines. Oh well, Jews aren't a race of people. Cause that again, I mentioned earlier, when you say that, you're de you're denying who the Messiah came to save. If you if you didn't come, if he came for his people. And these people are not a race of people, then that opens the door for everybody. everybody. Y'all ain't slick. We see through it. Stop it. Stop. I see why we're the main target. We come out the Bible and smash you each time. That's right. I'm going to burn. I'll make it clear. That's why I attack Christianity every class I do. I attack Christianity. Every chance I get, I'm going to burn every Christianity bridge I can find. Every one of them. And anybody that's coming against us. The book of Isaiah, chapter 60 and verse 3. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. So when Israel is set up above the mountains, above the hills, nations are going to come to us. Go ahead. Lift the This goes back to Zechariah 8 where it says they'll grab, a, grab your skirt of the, of, the, of the Jew. Go ahead. Lift up thine eyes round about and see all, thy, all they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy son shall come from far and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. We're going to have remnants of our people from foreign lands being brought over by the heathens. Go ahead. Then shalt thou, then thou shalt see and flow together. Remember that term? Flow together. Who's flowing together? Judah. And who else? And Ephraim. Go ahead. Right. Go ahead. And thy heart shall fear and be enlarged because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. Watch this. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. The abundance of the seas are going to the ships. The nations are all going to come together equally with all their wealth and bring it to you equally. You have gold. Arabs have gold. Uh, let's see who else. Um, Ammon has gold. Moab, they're going to bring it to us equally. They all are going to have ships. Put the gold on their ships equally and bring it to us. Go ahead. The multitude of camels shall cover thee. The drum, dromedaries, one hump camels, of Midian and of Ephath, all they from Shaba shall come. They shall bring gold in case, and case, incense, incense, and they shall shew forth the praises of the Lord. Yeah, they're gonna bring on to the kingdom. Go ahead, to our kingdom. Go ahead. All of the flocks of Kedar, Ishmael's children, shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Nabah, Nabah, Nabah that's, Eph, that's Israel's child too, Kedar, Nabah, go ahead. Shall minister unto thee. Not with bombs, with gold and incense. That's what they're going to bring. Go ahead. They shall come up with acceptance on mine altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. Go ahead. Who are these that fly as a cloud, and as the doves to their windows? Surely the isles shall wait for me, and the ships of Tarshish first. To bring thy sons from far, their silver and their gold with them. Because our people, you have our children who are in foreign lands, who the heathen know they're Israel. They're going to bring them too. They're gonna, we're going to raise them. Because we got these heathens that have our people, our children among them in these foreign lands, who are still scattered, who know who they are. They just go, listen, you're Israel, you're gold. you got to go. You can't be here no That's more. Right. Get out of here. Go. We're going to take you with your people. You can't be here. Go ahead. Unto the name of the Lord thy God. And to the Holy One of Israel, because he hath glorified thee. Go ahead. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. Equally. And, and their king shall minister unto thee. Equally. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Go ahead. Therefore thy gates shall be opened continually. They shall not be shut day nor night. Why? Go ahead. That men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles. The wealth of the Gentiles. We're going to have our gates open all the time. We're going to have all kind of gold and silver and brass and clothing and silk. All kinds of expensive, going to be expensive things will be brought into our kingdom constantly, back to back, all day long. We're going to be the wealthiest kingdom on the planet. We're going to have everyone's wealth in our kingdom. Because it's really ours anyway. Go ahead. And that their kings may be brought. And we're going to have their kings brought to us in chains too. That's part of the, of the forces. Go ahead. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve, thy, serve thee shall perish. 
Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. See, that preface goes to all nations. See, here you go, equality. You don't serve us, you're going to get put to death. Go ahead. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee. The fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together. All wood. Go ahead. The beautiful. To beautify. To beautify the place of my sanctuary. Decorate it. Go ahead. And I will make the place of my feet glorious. Go ahead. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. Go ahead. What? Shall come bending unto thee. Go ahead. And all. Yes. Go ahead. And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. Now, see. There's your privilege right there. You get to bow down to the niggas. In the space. Congratulations. You get to do that equally. Those of you online and the frenemies, enemies, heathens alike, you get to bow down to us equally. Congratulations. I love that bow down. Let me get one more scripture. Give me Revelation 3 verse 9. Revelation 3 verse 9. I love the bowing down part. Yeah, that's the best part. The book of Revelation, chapter 3 and verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. The devils. There's a church on this earth right now that are filled with devils. Read on. Which say they are Jews and are not. You got people lying about who the real Jews are. And this, that's who Christ said he's going to target upon his return. Read on. But do lie. But they what? Do lie. You got liars out there. Mm -hmm. Read on. Behold. I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. That's just what we just read. Yeah. Christ said when he comes, he's going to make whoever's lying come and bow down before the real Jews' feet. Read on. And to know that I have loved thee. Because you're confused about who Christ loves. Yep. So he says, when I come, I'm going to make it clear who I love. Because you people want to listen to the white man and to the foolishness and to the scholars with the degrees. We listen to our spirit because it bears witness here. That's what I'm waiting on. Christ said, when I come, I'm going to make these imposters bow down before your feet. And you're going to be like, damn, Jesus does love me like the Bible says. Because y'all singing that song. Okay, Jesus loves me, this I know for the but No, we ain't going to have to sing that song. You're going to know he loves you when the other nations are bowing before your feet. That's love. Get out that Christian state of mind, that foolishness. Read on. Ver, uh, Isaiah? Yeah. Isaiah 60, verse 14. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee, and all they that despise thee shall bow themselves at the soles of thy feet. Yeah. And they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Everybody going to know where Israel is at that point. Go ahead. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated. We have been forsaken and hated, like Philando Castle. Same, same thing. Go ahead. Right. So that no man went through thee, I will make thee an eternal excellence, a joy of many generations. An eternal excellency. Go ahead. Thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles and shalt suck the breast of kings. Meaning take all their resources like they did to us, take, suck them dry. So well, not nothing's left. They got to they keep bringing it. But just keep taking their wealth, take their forces. Go ahead. And thou shalt know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer. I am thy Savior and thy Redeemer. Not everyone's Savior and Redeemer. Thy Savior, thy Redeemer. Go ahead. The mighty one of Jacob. Go ahead. For brass, I will bring gold. A lot of us have brass in the house. Most of us said, nah, no more brass for you. You're going to get gold now. You're going to replace your brass with gold. And for iron, I will bring silver. You have things that are iron in your house. It's nah, no more of that. You don't want no iron. You want gold. You want silver. Go ahead. And for wood, brass. No more wood, you're going to have brass. Go ahead. And for stones, iron. Go ahead. I will also make thy offices peace and thine exactors righteousness. We're going to have our own people collecting tax and tribute from the other nations. Exactors. Go ahead. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land. No more black on black crime. No more violence in our land from the other nations. Violence shall no longer be heard in our land. Is it being heard in Israel today? Yes, it is. So they ain't talking about them. Go ahead. Wasting nor destruction within thy borders. There was war going on since they got in the land. That ain't the Bible says. No more war. Go ahead. But thou shalt call thy walls salvation. So within the walls of our land, that will be salvation. 
So if someone says to you, I'm saved, we're, well, if you're here, you ain't saved then. Because it says the walls of salvation. Where we're in our kingdom and our walls are built up by the heathens, that's what it'll say salvation. In your land. Dig it. That's so powerful because they're trying to get us to believe that the imposters over there in Jerusalem are the real Jews. They're in Tel Aviv. Do you know that they have alarm systems throughout Tel Aviv's that when it goes off, what do people have to do when the alarm system goes off? Why they gotta run? Because the Arab is shooting rockets over the walls. Does that sound like people who God is protecting? Does that sound like people who are God has freed them and delivered them and they're the chosen people of God? How could you live if at any time you can look up and see a rock a rocket coming to hit your house? That don't make no damn sense. The freedom that the Bible sits down, gives to the Israelites that the deacon just explained, we're going to be chilling. Yep. We're going to be waking up saying, yo, how many slaves you got? Yo, I got more slaves than you. <laughs> <laughs> yo, where your wife at? Yo, she's out there. She's picking our stuff. She's doing this. Because you know how uh, Eve is, how the Israelite woman is. They love to decorate. They love to shop. That's what you're going to be doing. We ain't going to be doing this punching in for 9 o'clock. For five o'clock or whatever, all the stuff that you see and doing now that you're comfortable with and getting peanuts is gonna stop. It's gonna stop. This is gonna be like a nightmare. We're gonna be like, damn, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Ruling, ruling, ruling. They're an idiot if you want anything different. Read 18 again. Verse 18. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land. There should be no rockets flying over your walls if that's the prophecy fulfilled. Don't make no sense. Go ahead. Wasting nor destruction within thy borders. Go ahead. But thou shalt call thy walls salvation and thy gates praise. Go ahead. The sun shall be no more thy light by day. Neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. But the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light. And thy God, thy glory. Our God going to be right there with us. The Messiah going to be sitting in the kingdom right in there with us. Go ahead. Thy son, thy son shall no more go down. Neither shall thy moon withdraw her. You, ain't gonna, you, ain't gonna, you can call him some more. What's the scripture again? The scripture? What's that scripture? I can't remember. I was like, oh, man, I forgot. Where was that verse? Uh, no more of that. No more of that. It's going to be on here. It's going to be there. It's going to know everything. No forgetting nothing. Go ahead. For the Lord shall be thine everlasting light. And the days end of thy morning shall be ended. And the days, that's rest without fear. I go back to Luke 1. I go back to Isaiah 14. Does it read that part again? And the days? And the days of thy morning shall be ended. Now get Revelation 21. We're almost done. Revelation 21, verse 23. Revelation 21, 23. Let's see if it goes in conjunction with Isaiah 60. Maybe let's talk about now. I don't know. Revelation 21. And 23. The book of Revelation, chapter 21 and verse 23. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it. And the Lamb is the light thereof. Isaiah 60, the next verse. And the nations of them which are saved Israel. shall walk in the light of it. Watch this. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. That's the nations. Isaiah 60. Go ahead. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for they shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. Yeah, we just read that in Isaiah 60. That's prophecy for, That's prophecy there. This has not happened yet. At all. The Arabs are not trying to bring no damn gold to Israel. They're trying to yeah. the map. <laughs> They try to bring, they try to bring a That's bomb. Right. They're gonna bring gold. They're gonna bring, a, they're gonna bring gold with C4 tape to the bottom of it. Tape to the bottom. I bring you a gift from Allah. Yeah. Boom! Alhamdulillah. <laughs> 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 All right. So we're gonna end it on that. Shalom, this I'm Eldon Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. 
Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube channels. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets out. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.